Welcome today. Um, again, uh, my name is Mike Randall. I am with the UW-Madison Physics Department. Uh, I am the Outreach Coordinator for the Wonders of Physics program. Um, if you're here for the, the beer talk or the chocolate talk, you're in the right place. Uh, just stay right <laughs> where you are. Anyway, I, uh, I do a lot of physics outreach programs, mostly for kids. So for some of you, you're going to learn something new today. For some of you, it might be review. For some of you, I may insult your intelligence. Play along with me. Um, you're also going to be painfully aware that I am not a musician. <laughs> Play along with me. Anyway, we're going to start off here with uh, just covering some of the basics. So I, I've always found it's a good idea to start with the basic definition. So w the first thing is we're going to be talking about music. What is music? I looked it up. Uh, it's an art of sound. It expresses ideas and emotions. It uses elements of rhythm, melody, harmony, and color, whatever that is. Okay, well, I'm being a physicist. I could probably talk about sound. So let's focus on the sound, shall we? My colleagues will cover the rest of it for, for you very thoroughly. Sound is defined as a mechanical vibration transmitted through some elastic medium. Um, in this case, we're usually dealing with air. So it turns out that the speed of uh, sound in air at sea level is um, those numbers there. 761 miles an hour I find to be the most impressive way to say that. But they all mean exactly the same thing. So vibration. Vibration is an oscillation, or it's a, something, some periodic motion. Uh, it's usually through some medium. It could be really, something rigid or elastic, like air. Um, basically, you're forcing something away from where it wants to be. Okay, you're forcing it out of its state of equilibrium. OK, so what's a vibration? Well, it's an oscillation. It's a periodic motion. Oops, I'm sorry. There we go. That's what I was going for. Now, we all know or most of us know. Does anyone not know that sound is a wave? Raise your hand if you don't know that. I'm checking to see if he's paying attention. Okay, he didn't raise his hand. So we know that sound is a wave. What's a wave? Well, again, we're talking about oscillations. It's, it's an oscillation that travels through a medium or space. It's a transfer of energy. Now, that's something we haven't brought up yet. Uh, a wave it generally transfers energy from one place to another without usually without permanently displacing whatever it's moving through. It might temporarily move something you know, out of position, but in, on average, it stays right where it was. So you're not really moving stuff around. So let's talk about energy. Now I get to use some props. Here's, ooh, I just realized. Mm, hey, that'd be fun. <laughs> You'll hear the sound of a microphone being destroyed. Ooh, okay, here we go. So it takes some energy to lift this bowling ball, right? Now, there, energy is the ability to do work. Okay, you know, there's many different forms of energy, but there's basically just two types of energy. There's stored energy or potential energy, and then there's kinetic energy. Right now, this bowling ball has stored energy in it because I had to lift it up, so it took some work to do that. When I let go of it, it starts moving. It moves fast, and then it slows down and stops again. So it's, right now, it's going back and forth between potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic, potential, kinetic. Oh, notice we have an oscillation going on here. So that's basically what happens in a wave. You're going from one form of energy to another back and forth. OK, let me get out of front of the screen here. There are a couple different kinds of waves uh, in general, at least as far as what we're going to be talking about. There's transverse waves. And there's a lot of ways I could have shown this to you, but I decided to go old school and use a rope. So, those of you in the back row will hopefully you can see this. Did you see it? There's a wave. <laughs> there we go. We'll get up a little higher. So that's a wave. That's called a transverse wave. It's a wave that goes back and forth, perpendicular to the direction of its travel. Okay. Now all waves have different characteristics. There's a wave length. It's the distance between. If we have a bunch of waves going, it's a distance between one peak and the next. The frequency is how many waves pass a certain point in a certain amount of time. The amplitude is how tall are those waves. How much of a displacement do we have? 
Um, standing waves is very important because when we talk about music, we're usually dealing with standing waves. So a standing wave, what happens is, I don't know if you can see it. When that wave went down there, it bounced back. When it hit his hand, it bounced back. We'll try it again. Did you see it come back? If you do this fast enough, you'll set up what's called a standing wave. I know that's maybe not the easiest thing to see. I've got another demonstration that will show it a little more clearly. Basically what happens is the wave goes out and it comes back. When those two waves meet, waves do funny things. They, can eat, they add together. Sometimes they add together constructively. In other words, the high point adds with the high point, you get a very tall spot. Sometimes the high point adds up with the opposite and they cancel each other out. So when you have a standing wave, you generally get, let's see if I can do some larger ones here. There's a basic standing wave. Looks like somebody jumping rope. Okay? Both ends are fixed. Those would be called nodes, where there's no movement. The middle part where it was moving the most is called an antinode. And that's very important to remember when we talk about music. We'll get back to that in just a moment. Okay. Sound waves are not that kind of a wave. They're a different kind of wave called a longitudinal wave. In other words, they're the wave motion happens to be in the direction they're traveling. The air gets squished together, it gets spread apart. And to demonstrate that, I have this little gadget here. This occurs to me. This may not be, again, in a very good place for all the people in the back row to see. Let's see if we can set this up here. So if I start a vibration going in that, can you see how those little rings squished together. Let me sit, raise this up even a little bit higher here. We'll try this one more time. Thank you very much. I knew someone would come up here. Can you see those travel across there? So air is very much the same way. Just like these strings get squished together and spread apart, Air gets squished together, so you have regions of high pressure and low pressure, high pressure and low pressure, and they go out. Now, when they reach the opposite end, they will bounce back, and you can get standing waves in this, too. You get places where there's no motion at all, and there's places where there is quite a bit of motion between those. So now we can finally say, what the heck is sound? Sound is simply longitudinal waves, usually in air. Okay, now we know what sound is, but what's music? That's a little tougher, because obviously music is uh, in the ear of the beholder. It's very subjective. It's probably easier to talk about what noise is. I think people can generally agree on that. It's a mixture of random frequencies. So an example of noise might be this. A lot of different sounds going on at the same time. As opposed to something like a pure tone. Now I have a gadget here. This is a tuning fork. It puts out one particular frequency of sound. Now, I have this little thing, I have an oscilloscope here. My apologies to you, I was gonna have this up on the computer screen and I had a technical problem, so again, you're gonna have to just take a look at it here. This is what this looks like. I need taller stuff. <laughs> Let's try that again. Can you see the shape of that? Makes a nice, pretty little waveform. That's called a sine wave or sinusoidal wave. Let's set that down. Actually, I probably could have, I have a box I could set that on too, because we're gonna be looking at this a little bit more. So that, that is an example of a pure tone. So in general, music, if you want to try and define it, it's a combination of tones that are coming out in an orderly or pleasing way. It's up to you to decide what that sounds like. Um, most music is not pure tones, though. It's something called harmonics. So what you just heard would be what's called, referred to as a fundamental frequency. Imagine when I was swinging that rope back and forth, when both ends were fixed, and just the middle moving back and forth. That's kind of what a fundamental frequency would look like. But if I move that faster, you'd see more nodes show up along the way. Those would be called, those are higher modes uh, called overtones. 
if those are coming, if those tones are happening in integer multiples of that original uh, fundamental frequency, those are called harmonics. Let's take a look at what a harmonic actually looks like. Daniel's going to help out with that, with the uh, courtesy of his French horn. We're going to show you again on the oscilloscope. This is uh, called inventing on the fly. Go ahead and warm up. I'm going to grab a box and set that oscilloscope up on something so people can see a little bit better. Daniel was practicing a little earlier, and he's trying to come up with exactly the same tone as before. All right. That's perfect. <laughs> there was some noise. Okay. So let's try this again. Take, take a look, everyone. If you can see, here's what this looks like. There we go. Oh no. <laughs> Not working? It died. <laughs> I love it when I have a backup plan and the backup plan fails. No, I think we've got a, uh, my little preamp has uh, gone away. Wouldn't you know it? Well, Let's give them the demonstration anyway, if you would please. Oh, that just came back. I thought. Yeah, we're getting something there. Do it one more time. Try one more time. We were still getting a waveform. It wasn't as nice and pretty, though, as what we saw before, but it still was periodical as opposed to, I know, thank you very much, and thank you for playing along with us here, as opposed to, again, the noise, which looks like this. There we go. So you can kind of see there's just a bunch of random stuff going on. All right. How music is made, you've got three basic ways of doing that. You've got stringed instruments, percussion instruments, and wind instruments. With stringed instruments, you've got a vibrating string moving the air. The, set, the pressure waves are created as the string moves back and forth. Uh, there's some very uh, basic mathematical equations that can you, you can use to figure out the exact tone of a string. In general, they depend on three things. The length of the string, so the longer the string, the longer the, that movement will be back and forth, so the lower the tone will be to your ear. String tension, if you tighten the string, the tone's going to shift higher. The string density is also important too. Okay? A lighter string will move faster, a thicker or a denser string will move more slowly, so again, a more dense string will give you a lower tone. Percussion instruments, it's really not that different from a string instrument. It's, again, something mechanically moving back and forth, and the, and, except in it's not string, it's something else. Uh, as the parts of the instrument vibrate, you'll get vi those vibrations will move the air. There's two different categories of that. There's a definite pitch and an indefinite pitch. With a definite pitch, you've got overtones that are harmonic in general. Some examples? Aha. A xylophone. <laughs> Xylophones depend on the bar length. <laughs> Told you you would be painfully <laughs> aware that I'm not a musician. Uh, the speed of sound in the bar. Different materials have different speeds of sound. And of course that uh, affects how, they, how quickly they vibrate and correspondingly the pitch of the sound that comes out of them. And of course the bar shape. You can have rectangles, you can have tubes, there's different shapes you can have. Uh, certain drums can also be considered to have definite pitch. Uh, this drum, 
pardon me. This drum, for example, depends on three things again. It depends on the tension of the drum head, just like before, kind of like the tension of the strings, the diameter of the drum head, uh, which is, uh, corresponds to the length of the string, and the area density, or you know, how thick this material is, again, analogous to the density of the, st of the string that in, the, in a string instrument. So again, we can get some very nice tones. Indefinite pitch is examples where there is there are many different frequencies produced. Most of them are not harmonics. Uh, oops, sorry. Snare drum is an example, tambourine, and of course what I just showed you earlier, the maracas, you get a, just a bunch of different sounds coming through there. Of course, if you uh, shake this in a rhythmic fashion, it could be definitely considered as music, but it just depends on what you're like. All right. Wind instruments, that's where the air is actually directly vibrated. So it's not a mechanical vibration that, it, that starts the air moving. You're actually working directly with the air. The tone from a, um, a wind instrument depends on the length of the tube. Depends on whether the tube is open or closed on one end. I'll show you what that's like here in just a second. I've got a device here that's kind of fun. Uh, it also depends on the gas density, although we really don't talk about that much so, because we're using air. I know if you want to use helium, it sounds like fun, but that doesn't really apply here. So to demonstrate this, again, I could have shown you lots of different methods. I like this one. This is called a hoot tube. Uh, and actually, it's also called a, I can't pronounce the guy's name, but I call it a hoot tube. All that it, we have here is a t metal pipe with some metal screen in there. So we get the screen nice and hot. As the, of course, we all know that hot air rises. So as this heats up the air, the air will travel up the tube, and it gets turbulent. So it makes a whole lot of noise, basically. But only one of those frequencies matches the fundamental of this tube. So it'll start oscillating back and forth. It takes a moment. So there's an example of an open, you know, of, you know, an open-ended musical instrument. Both ends are open. That means that the wave that got set up in here, we had a node right in the middle, and both ends were anodes. So both, on either end of this, the air was free to move back and forth very rapidly. So there was a dead spot right in the middle. Okay. Now it turns out that when you have that kind of a setup, that's half the wavelength of the sound you just heard. So if we had if we want to know the wavelength that this is going to produce, we just measure the length of this pipe and double it. And that would give us the wavelength, and then from that we could figure out what the tone is, what the frequency would be. It's a little more complicated, but it's pretty darn close. However, if one end of this tube was closed, then that means that you've got a dead spot here, and then this is the end that moves back and forth. That's only a fourth of the wavelength that you're going to hear. Okay, so you have to take the length of this tube, take it times four. Would that give you a higher pitch or a lower pitch sound? What do you think? It gives you a lower pitch sound, and I'll show you what happens. We'll do this one more time. Listen to what happens when I lower this near the tabletop. So let it get to hooting first. Did you hear that dropped? That's because we were basically converting it from an open-ended instrument to a closed-ended instrument. So as soon as it approached the table, we forced it into a different vibrational mode. So it became, we basically doubled the wavelength and we cut the, the uh, frequency in half. So it made a lower tone. Okay. I just love that thing. <laughs> Now, as you can see, I'm actually much more comfortable with 
explosions and fire and flaming things that I am with music, which is why I brought this other toy. I brought that along because that's really fun. But now I'm going to bring show you this. This is called a Rubens tube. This is a very interesting way of showing those standing waves. I mentioned earlier that I was, had some different ways to show you standing waves. What this is is a big pipe. There's lots of little tiny holes along here. I'm going to fill this pipe with flammable gas. <laughs> Don't worry, it's perfectly safe. They've been doing this for many, many years. The guy invented this was invented over 90 years ago. Uh, the flames come out. There's a loudspeaker here, and I'm going to pump sound into this. So we'll set up standing waves in the tube. So that'll create differences in pressure along here. So, well, you'll just see what that looks like, okay? Let's fire it up. There we go. There we go. So we've got our fire going here. I'm going to turn up the pressure just a tiny bit. All right. So that's like what it looks like with no sound. Can you all see that? Notice that the flames are higher at one point and lower at others. We're creating standing waves in the tube. If I change the frequency, you'll see the position of those, node, of those points change. Now, interestingly enough, turn the volume down a little bit. Interestingly enough, this thing's also giving me trouble today. What else is new? There we go. We'll turn it up so we can see a few more nodes here. There we go. The places where you see the nodes, you'd think that that's where the, uh, where you see the flames, you'd think that would be where the anti-nodes are, where the pressure is going back and forth like this. And it's not. It's actually just the opposite. It happens where there's there's no pressure variations. Um, I'll leave it to you to look up online as to why that is. It's kind of counterintuitive. So this, this may not be the best sound de demonstration in terms of accuracy, but it's really fun. <laughs> and I always like to end on a bang, so to speak. So thank you for listening to my sound today. And uh, we're, no we're now going to switch over to some, some, other, some real musicians, and we'll uh, talk about what's how that sound operates inside of your heads.